Hello everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today to talk about Skunks 101. My name is Katrina Terrell and I'm the Community Engagement Manager here at the Alberta Institute for Wildlife Conservation. Now today's presentation is going to focus, as I hope you've guessed, all about skunks, but not just about their spray. We're also going to be talking about how good of neighbors they actually are and how humans can live with skunks very, very easily in the wild. Now, if you do have any questions as we go through today, I'll have my email at the very end and you are welcome to send me questions whenever you'd like. Now, for those of you who haven't heard about the Alberta Institute for Wildlife Conservation before, we're a nonprofit wildlife rehabilitation center located just outside of Calgary, Alberta. Now, as a wildlife rehabilitation center, we have three main jobs. The first of which is to rescue wild animals in distress. And every year, our center gets between one and 2,000 animals coming through our patient hospital. Now, we also rehabilitate these animals, and that means that we take care of them, we treat them for any injuries, and we keep them for as long as it takes for them to be healthy enough to go back to the wild on their own. And that's the third thing that we do, is we release all of these animals. We don't keep any of them as pets or anything like that. They all go back to the wild where they belong. Now, one other part of our mission at AIWC is to educate the public on wildlife issues. And the reason this is so important is because 95% of the patients we get coming into our hospital are there because of human-related issues. Unfortunately, many of these are preventable. But the more people know about their local wildlife, the better we are able to help them and make sure that the animals aren't getting injured in the first place. So that's why we run talks like this. And one of the patients that we get a lot of at AIWC are skunks. We get about between 50 and 90 skunks coming into the hospital every year and many, many, many calls on our wildlife hotline about them. Unfortunately, people's reactions to seeing skunks aren't always positive. What do you think of when you see this picture of a skunk? Most people's reaction is something along the lines of, ew, or, ugh, get that out of my backyard. Mainly people are afraid of skunks. And they're afraid that they're going to spray them, their pets, or their children. However, skunks are actually a really important part of our environment and can be fantastic neighbors to have around if we only give them the chance. So hopefully today you'll learn a little bit more about why they're so great. Now, if you are going to be going outside and looking for skunks, um, spring and summer are really the best times to do so, mainly because this is also when the skunk babies are first coming out. Now, skunk babies are also known as kits. They're born in late spring and usually in litters of between six and 11 kits at a time. So very, very big families. The kits are born blind and deaf and are completely reliant on their mother. And their mother is the sole caregiver for these kits. Now she stays within a territory that's very small. It's usually about one kilometer squared in size. She'll leave the kits underground in their den during the day, will go out, find food, and bring food back for herself and then feed the kits milk. The kits spend their first year with their mother. Though. So they'll spend their first winter with her and then after that winter, they'll go out and find their own territories. Now, even if you have skunks in your area, though, it's unlikely that you've probably ever seen them. Skunks are fully nocturnal, and during the day, they tend to spend most of their time underground. Skunks are excellent diggers, and the homes they dig are underground in areas we call dens. Now, when living near humans, skunk dens are often found underneath man-made structures. So skunks will dig underneath staircases, decks, and even garden sheds as well. But in areas where there's fewer people, skunks tend to go for more natural materials and will dig underneath old logs or underneath large trees as well. The reason they can do this is because of their claws. And looking at this picture of the skunk claws, you can see they are very long and very strong. They almost look a little bit intimidating. Good news though, is that skunks only use their claws for two things. They're going to use them for digging their dens and digging up food. So they're never going to use their claws to attack or scratch people. And in case anybody was wondering about it, they do not use their claws to climb trees either. Now I say skunks are digging for food, 
But what on earth are skunks actually eating? Well, the answer to that is pretty well anything they can find. One of the reasons that skunks make such good neighbors is because they're really a one animal cleanup crew. Skunks are what we call omnivores, meaning they eat everything, fruits, vegetables, meat, insects, it doesn't matter, they are happy to consume it all. And many of the things they actually like eating are things that we humans really don't want in our areas anyway. So skunks eat things like fallen fruit, including crab apples, which many people find difficult to get rid of. They'll also eat ants, mice, spiders, and even wasps as well. So if you have a wasp problem in your backyard, a skunk can really be your best friend. The way our skunks are finding their food is a little bit different from how we would find ours. We humans tend to rely on our sense of sight to find food. We like to look at food and decide if it's right. But skunks have very poor eyesight. In fact, they can only see about three meters in front of them and everything else just gets very, very blurry. So instead of using their sense of sight to find food, our skunks are using their sense of smell and they're following their noses to wherever they can find something tasty. Now, sometimes that works really well, and other times it can get them into a bit of trouble. There are some dangers in relying only on your sense of smell, and this picture shows you one of them. Yes, unfortunately for our skunks, they tend to follow their noses into areas that are a little bit too small for them. So they will often get their heads stuck in containers, uh, such as jam jars, plastic cups of all sizes, even tin cans and pop cans as well. Every year at AIWC, we get a lot of skunks coming in with this situation, and it can be very dangerous for them, even though it does look a little bit funny. The reason this is so dangerous though, is because a skunk with a cup on its head cannot see, they cannot smell, and they can't even hear. So they'll wander into areas that are very dangerous, such as construction sites or even roads. And then they have to come into the hospital once they're injured. And this isn't the only danger out there for skunks either. Many, many, many other hazards exist, especially in areas where there's a lot of people. One of the main situations that we actually see at AIWC are baby skunks being orphaned. And they're being orphaned because people are trapping the mother skunk and moving her to a different area because they don't want skunks in their backyard. Now, this is not only dangerous for the babies who have no one to take care of them at this point. It's also very dangerous for the mother skunk as she won't be able to find food in her new territory and she may even have to fight another skunk if there's somebody already there. In addition to this though, trapping and relocating a skunk doesn't really work very well anyway. And that's not because the skunk's going to come back, but because skunks will just move into that territory once there's no skunk of other wise available. So it can be very, very difficult to really remove a skunk. Uh, if you really don't want a skunk in your backyard, there are other deterrents that you can try and we can help you with that too if you have questions. Now, adult skunks get hit by cars very often. It's another injury we deal with a lot. And adult and baby skunks alike both often get injured by off-leash cats and dogs. Now, this situation is not just dangerous for the skunk. It's also very, very unpleasant for your pet and by extension for the pet owners as well, because the way a skunk is going to defend itself is going to be to spray. And yes, now we are coming to the part where we're gonna be talking about skunk spray. But the important thing to remember when talking about a skunk spraying is that skunks actually don't want to do this. They don't want to spray you at all. Skunks are only going to spray when they're afraid of being eaten. And the reason they're so careful about this is because they have limited amounts of spray. Only enough for about three to four shots and then they are sprayed out. So they run out of spray. Now this spray can take them a while to make. In fact, about one to two weeks to refresh their spray supply. So they're going to be very careful about when they use it. Skunk spray is the last line of defense for the skunk. It is never used to attack anyone. Now, a skunk is going to be very careful about using its spray. And so before it does spray, a skunk will often give four warning signs to make sure 
that you are not trying to eat them. So before spraying, a skunk is going to raise their tail straight up in the air. This lets you know that they have seen you and that they're concerned. They're going to stomp their front feet, hiss a little bit like a cat will, and bluff charge, which means they'll run forwards really fast and run backwards and forwards and run backwards. And only after these four stages will a skunk turn around, aim for your eyes, and spray. And the reason they're aiming for your eyes is not because they're mean. It's because they want to stop you with one spray only. If you get something in your eyes, you will not be able to chase a skunk because it's trying to escape. So that's why they would aim for your eyes. But if we know our skunk signs and we listen to what they're saying, and we remove ourselves from the area once we know a skunk has been surprised by us, then we really won't have anything to worry about. Unfortunately, sometimes accidents do happen. You might all of a sudden open up your porch door and there's a skunk standing right there and there's really no time for you to do anything. Ah, at AIWC, we understand we get sprayed very often by the baby skunks in our care mainly because we have to go in and pick them up for their veterinary checks, and they don't tend to like that very much. So we've got a lot of experience with getting rid of the skunk spray smell. The important thing to remember is tomato juice does not really work. All this is going to do is it's going to give you a nice orange ring around your bathtub, and you're going to have to take multiple baths in it for it to do anything. Skunk spray is an acid, and the most effective way to get rid of an acid is to neutralize it with some sort of base, like baking soda or hydrogen peroxide. And so what we recommend you try is this recipe, where you run a bathtub full of water, you pour in one liter of diluted hydrogen peroxide, a quarter cup of baking soda, and a tablespoon of dish soap. And the dish soap is in there because in addition to being an acid, skunk spray is also very, very oily. So that dish soap is gonna help break down the oils and make sure that you're going to get clean a lot faster. So mix all of this up together, soak in it for about five to 10 minutes and repeat as needed. I'll caution you though, don't put clothes in this mixture because the hydrogen peroxide will leave white spots on it. If you do get sprayed, uh, just best to throw away those clothes. Now, even though skunks can spray us, as we know, they really don't want to. And in fact, skunks have a lot more to fear from being around humans than we humans have to worry about if we're around a skunk. Our skunks really need our help to make sure they're surviving well. And there's a few things that we humans can do to make their lives a lot easier, some of which I bet we're probably already doing. So first and foremost, we wanna make sure we're collecting all our garbage and recycling and put it in, putting it into the relevant bins, making sure they're secure and that skunks cannot get into them to stick their faces in those jars. We also wanna make sure that we're how to live with skunks, not trapping them and moving them somewhere else, which is again, dangerous for the skunk and not very effective at getting skunks away anyway. We also wanna make sure we're keeping our pets on a leash or inside at all times. And this is again going to make sure that our pets are not getting sprayed and our skunks are not getting bitten by our pets. Now, finally, if you do see an injured skunk or any baby skunks who are wandering around without their mother, it's important to call your local wildlife rehab center as soon as possible. The earlier we can get to these injured animals or orphaned animals, the better it is for them to be recovered and then go back to the wild once they're fully ready to do so. Well, that brings me to the end of our Skunks 101 presentation, but I hope you all enjoyed it. And thank you so much for learning a bit about your local wildlife and supporting wildlife in need. If you do have any questions, this is my email, it's education at AIWC.ca. And if you enjoyed today's presentation and you'd like to help support our wildlife hospital, uh, please head to this link and feel free to donate. We are always looking for help to support our local wildlife and even a small amount helps, whether it's $2 or $200, whatever you feel like, uh, that's going to make a big difference for our wild animals. Thank you again for joining us for Skunks 101 and stay tuned for more wildlife education presentations.